Last, but certainly not least, we have Chef Oliver Hale. This is Daniel. Better known as Chef O, who is a two-time kidney transplant recipient and nationally recognized advocate and speaker for donor awareness, as well as a multi-medal winner of the transplant games.
They, they believe in life. They believe in life. They love life. Now, you didn't come to hear me talk about that. You want to hear something I can cook. When I, when I do cooking demonstration, I try to think about enhancements. Enhancements. I mean, you can cook the chicken breast all you want to, but how can you enhance the chicken breast? One of the things that I love doing is taking meals to put it around the chicken breast. Like what I have here tonight, I'm going to take a little chicken stock, just very little, put it in my hand, in my pan. I don't, did I just say hand? <laughs> nah, I thought so. Now I don't want to see how many people call it though. Put a little chicken stock in my pan here to get it heated up. And I have some plain basmati rice, you know, nice and flaky, nice and loose. Cause a lot of transplant uh, kidney patients have tired of eating plain rice. So I came up with a solution on how to make rice more tasty by adding different things like I am going to make cranberry rice. Cranberry rice. Plain or everyday dry cranberries, you get in your Mr. D and Mr. W and Mr. M. I'm not allowed to say their names for that. <laughs> I don't know if your lawyer may be here tonight, so. So with that in mind, I'm taking some dry cranberries. Now, go one step further if you want to make the cranberry a little bit more plump. Soak them overnight in white wine. Yeah? It pumps them, get a nice flavor. If you're a person that do, do not like wine or cannot have wine, do cranberry juice. Something like that. Now, this is, I'm just going to do this cranberry rice, but there's other things you can do. Like, transplant recipient cannot have oranges or orange juice, but they can have vinegar orange juice. Okay, right, Doc? Okay, I just want to make sure you're there. Okay, help me out here. I'm taking these cranberries and heating them up here in the rice dish. And by the way, I pre-cooked the rice in just, just about 10, 15 minutes, rinsed it out, and set it in the refrigerator overnight because I love rice with a lot of my meals, uh, chicken, fish, and other items. Now, I'm going to take this, cook it up, get it nice and warm, and add a little cranberry juice. Just a little cranberry juice. All right, put some fire on this bad boy, and we're going to see what we we'll come up with. Now, with that in mind, it's flavorful. It's also not just plain, because so most people take their rice and that salt and pepper. <laughs> Can you do that word? Can we, Rick? No, sir, that's a no-no. Right, up. It's one of the biggest things of uh, talking and doing cooking for dollars to face it. Across the United States is trying to get them not to use rice. I mean rice. Salt. I love to use rice, of course. Using salt. I do a lot of seven and five course meals and keep a home. But when I go there, I set the table. And when I set the table, I do not put a salt and pepper shaker on the table. I don't. Because they go through the whole meal. Three hours later, I ask them, did you guys notice something you didn't have tonight? And one person would say, how come there wasn't salt and pepper on the table? As a chef, you don't know how embarrassing it is to take and do a dinner. Fix it nice, have it tasting real good, and you come along and the first thing you do is put salt and pepper on the plate. Don't you? Now, how many times are guilt? How many people are guilty of that? Oh, come on now. Uh, see, there you go. I know you. Uh, I got a chance to speak at the Minority Health Summit for the state of Michigan. And sitting at the table with me with the Surgeon General of Michigan, along with some other representatives of the pharmaceutical company, somebody from Blackwood and Pine, and somebody from Roach. And I told him about the J.C. Penney story. Anybody heard of the J.C. Penney story? <clears throat> oh boy. J.C. Penney, when he got ready to hire an executive, he always took him out to dinner. And he know as he took him out to dinner, he'd be going to hire this person to run his stores. How did he do that? They ordered food, put the food on the table. If this guy picked up a salt and pepper shaker and put it on the food, he wouldn't hire him. Because the guy made a decision before he even tried it. <laughs> a good theory, huh? <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> now, you, there is a nice plate of steamy, hot cranberry rice. 
Now, it wasn't hard. It didn't take long. I mean, it is something. Grand Red Chris had me come in, wanted me to do a dinner. Can I do a complete dinner in half an hour for a mom who got soccer practice, got to, got to take the kids to the football game, to the baseball game, and on and on and on. I said, sure. And I told her how to make a nice vegetarian chicken risotto. And, believe it or not, 30 minutes. Now, all of you know who love risotto, you don't do risotto in 30 minutes, right? Pre-cooked your rice before, get it done, get frozen vegetables, get frozen chopped chicken, put it in the freezer, take it out. Early that day in the refrigerator, let's go out, get home, put your butter, get your parmesan cheese, put it in the rice, get it mixing, get it going, put your chicken stock in, bam, throw your, your vegetables and also your chicken in, and a half an hour, your kids are sitting there and having dinner. There you go, that's it. Now what I have here is a little garlic. I love garlic and everything I know. Um, I'm going to call your attention to the back of the room back there. The uh, chefs of the group have came out to learn how to cook. So I don't know. <laughs> And they knew I was not happy with the dinner tonight, so they won't learn how to do this. <laughs> and when I started cooking, I used something that's very, very different. I know you've been looking at it up here. It's not olive oil. I don't use olive oil. I use Oliver oil. <laughs> that's my own brand of oil there that I do. I grow my own olives in my backyard. Aha, uh -huh. I know you're Italian people say, how can you grow olive in the backyard? But I grew it in the hood. There was, we, grew, we grew a good olive in the hood. <laughs> With my, all right, I got my garlic cooked up, I got the olive oil in here, got the chicken breast going. Oh man, I am, I am having good old times. Got this turned, got it going. And what you do is, you never put your chicken or fish or anything in a pan while your oil is cold. Make sure it's nice and hot so it can shock your chicken or whatever you have it to make, to make it come out as a great flavor. Now, I'm going to take this chicken breast that I had already pre-cooked. I'm going to set it right here, and I'm going to make a nice white wine cream sauce for it. Take a little, there we go, put a little flour in there. This very little flour, so you get that little flavor straight from my pan, get all the stuff in. Now I'm going to do something that uh, one of the chefs back there with a the fire thing was waiting on me to do this. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, you cannot have long eyebrows when you do it. Okay, please. Don't. <laughs> please. Don't. So I'm taking it with this garlic, with the, with the remnants of the chicken. Flour, get it nice and creamy. Take a little parsley, fresh chopped parsley, put it in here. And it's a very little chicken stock. Fresh. There you go. And you may notice it is salt free chicken stock. Close. Because you can get that now. No more low sodium. You can get it completely salt free. When you prepare a meal, I don't think anyone, I say a family of four, should not spend over 45 minutes in a kitchen. A family of two or three, you can do half an hour. You shouldn't be spending all day. I tell people when you're cooking a meat, chicken, or fish, get your pan hot with the olive oil, lash it on one side, flip it over, have your oven at 300, stick it in the oven, Start making your bed, you start making your potato. Don't sit there and play with that chicken all day. <laughs> I, I see people over and over again do it. And now you got a nice creamy sauce with, made out of chicken stock, white wine, that you can put all over your plate, and voila, your kids will love it, your husbands will love it, and guys, if you want to make your wife happy, Serve it that one evening. You, you get to add a few more years to your life. <laughs> As I was saying earlier, I am, yes, I am a transplant recipient, two-time 
In fact, with my second transplant, I joined a unique group of people. Not a unique group of people. A unique group of transplant recipients. I have had my transplant now for, I should say, 25 years, and I look forward every year to meet this group. But this cannot happen without the help of these fine gentlemen that was here this morning. This afternoon. but there's someone higher than you that I appreciate. People like Bill Ryan over there. Bill, they saw him up here. Is Sally still here? Sally? Sally Coleman, donor families. Donor family. Out of both my transplants, I haven't got a chance to meet my donor family. The first one I wrote a letter to, they didn't want to meet. I understand that and respect it. I'm waiting to the week after I get back from the transplant game so I can write and tell them how great it is. Because if they can, I would like to have come to the transplant game in 2016, which had been announced this week from Bill, that it's going to be in Cleveland, Ohio. So, Rick, I hope by then you have your uh, transplant, in which you will, by the young lady next to you, and we'll make sure you are not in the Texas Hold'em and Hold'em competition, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so with that in mind, I want to thank you and thank everyone for coming out tonight. This is wonderful. I might say for the last 31 years I've been involved with the Kidney Foundation, the uh, Gift of Life, Organ Procurement Agency, different agencies across the United States, pharmaceutical companies, and different conferences. And to have a crowd to come out to help to spread the word about what we have to do in this young man here. I am very happy to be a part of it. So I want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for letting us spend your time. And thank you for letting me come up and talk to you. Thank you. Well, I was, uh, I was mentioning to my husband, I said, I, I hope he got the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, I would really like to thank our panels of experts for sharing your information on the organ and tissue donation. Also, once again, thank you, Chef O, for your demonstration. That was terrific. And last, but certainly not least, sincerely, for being the first organ donor awareness event. It couldn't have happened without you being here. So absolutely, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for supporting this cause continue to spread the good news and spread the word because we certainly, what a difference we've learned one person can make. And so by finishing, I would just like to say that we have the power as we'll wrap it up to give on so that somebody can live on. So with that, thank you and have a blessed evening. Thank you.